possibilities. First of all, uh, looking at this member, there are only two locations where you have forces on it. You said the point P and a point C. So we could identify this as a two force member or a member on which the forces are <coughs> applied on two points only. So <coughs> when we identify this as a two force member, then we know from previous case that for equilibrium of this member, then there will be just one unknown force. There will be a force, let's say F and F. And the force which is in the member has to be along this length. And so direction is known. The only thing is that you don't know is the magnitude. Or you could have force going like this. So this is either in tension or in compression. <coughs> so <coughs> the moment you identify a particular member as a two force member, then for the equilibrium of that member, <coughs> the force has to pass through the line which connects those two points. So in this particular case, you had a point B and a point C. So the force has to go through that connecting line, which in this case happened to be the axis of the member. <coughs> the only choice you really have is whether you could choose this particular situation where the unknown force is going outward and creating a tension or <coughs> you have this choice where the member is creating a compression. So <coughs> if I look at the problem again back here, this crane goes down. I mean the tendency for this <coughs> arm will be to move downward and that will create compression in this member. So if that creates compression, then a choice will be this. And I'll just call this force as it's going to act at point B. Let's call this as a B. And then this will automatically be FB. So <coughs> now if I go back to the point B, that means the point B is out there here. Then if I made the choice that force on the member was FB and FB, this point is the same as this point. So if two points are the same, then there is going to be a force here in the same direction as the member and it should be going this way with the same magnitude. So I repeat that you had this force here at the member, the member connects to point B, then at point B you will have exact same force as the magnitude FB, but the two of them will be in opposite direction. So if this was going like this, then this has to go exactly in opposite direction and it should be the direction shown on here. So that's what gives you the free body. The only thing we need is some <coughs> dimensions. So this distance here was one feet. Then <coughs> the distance between here and here was also one feet. Then the distance from here up to the force here was 4 feet. Then 
the distance all the way from here up to here was 8 feet. Now you need the uh, angles and if this angle here is 40 then this angle would also be 40 or I can come back here and take this angle as 40. So that's the only angle we need. So that's the set was step one to complete the free body diagram with you take the original structure, you show all the forces on it, and uh, then you show all the dimensions, you show all the lengths and any useful angle. Then step two would be to write the equations. We go through the same set that is sum of the force along x to be zero, and you have the reaction at A, that's zero, and this force will give two components. There's going to be a component in the x direction and there's going to be a component in the y direction. So <coughs> the x component will add up to this as force Fp and it will be cosine 40 and that will go to 0. Then you're going to have the sum of the force in y direction that should also go to zero. You have a y at point A plus F B sine forty, that's the y component, it goes up. Then you got the force negative which is one twenty five. Then you also have <coughs> the force which is six hundred and that all should add up to the second equation then the moment equation. Now in this case a good choice will be point A because if you choose point A and you set the moment about that point as zero then AX and AY will not give any moment. I mean th they will be at the moment due to <coughs> reaction AX and reaction AY will be zero. The only <coughs> unknown in equations will be this. So we need the moment of this force about this point. And <coughs> the easiest way to work with would be instead of looking at the force, you look at its component.